Okay. Well, in keeping with the theme of some videos highlighting uh, the Sea Run Cutthroat and Resident Coho flies, I've been fishing all winter. Uh, up next is what's called the Squimp. Uh, this particular fly was designed by a local beach angler and fly tire, Mr. Mark Mercer. Uh, Mark hangs out over at WashingtonFlyFishing.com, uh, where I will often be found as well. Um, and a couple, two, three years ago, I don't know, he started posting a about this fly and how he'd been sort of designing it and fishing it and it had become his favorite sea uh, run cutthroat fly to the point that it was basically all he ever fished um, when somebody like Mark makes a statement like that I tend to pay attention so I took a look at a step-by-step -step post that he made and I sort of adapted what I had on hand and started tying these myself uh, Mark ties them a little bit differently um, he uses a I believe a rabbit dubbing in a dubbing loop for the body and uh, he uses a feather at the at the front I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head but uh, in keeping things simple and using what I had on hand this is sort of what I've been uh, settling on and uh, if the Delia squid is my number one fly that I tie on when I hit a beach especially during the winter uh, then the squimp would be number two by very close margin. Um, if I can't catch him on a, squ a squid, I'm quickly switching to a squimp. And if I can't catch him on those two patterns, then things are getting dire and I'm going to have to start digging deep into the fly box. Um, this, this fly just flat out produces. Um, sea run cutthroat, resident coho. Um, I saw Mark caught a nice black mouth on it the other day. Um, th th these flies are just great. Uh, I think the biggest key with this fly is the uh, the golden pheasant tippets at the back. Um, it gives it that kind of shrimpy barred look to it. Uh, beyond that, I think you could probably use you know whatever sort of colors and materials that that works for you. Um, I think that 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 is the particular key of this fly. Um, I'll tie this in a little different version as well with a white marabou tail and instead of golden pheasant tippets I'll use uh, Lady Amherst which is uh, black and white and it still gives it that barred look and that's been extremely effective as well um, I believe there's a steelhead fly called the squimp also but uh, it's a little bit different than this and you know as with all things fly tying you know there's not too much original out there anymore uh, we're all kind of borrowing from each other and designs that have already been around um, there's very little true innovation going on. I mean there's some. Um, I'm certainly not doing it. I'm just not that creative. But uh, and again I uh, I don't tie these anywhere near as pretty as Mark does. Um, I don't tie pretty flies. I've stated that before and I don't care. Um, I want to catch fish and that's my only concern. So to get started I have a uh, Umpqua U401 saltwater hook size 8. I've got the barb mashed down and I have a 5 seconds inch brass bead already on there. Um, I generally tie these in size 6, but I'm out of 6's at the moment, so size 8's going to work. Um, it'll fish just fine. I've caught plenty of them on size 8's. Um, oftentimes going smaller can be more productive when the fish are getting a little picky anyway. Um, you can use any hook, you know, Tiemco 811S is fantastic. There's the Daiichi 2546, I believe. Um, I don't usually tie these on uh, Gamagatsu SC15s just because the shank is quite a bit shorter on those and I like a little bit longer shank to work with for this particular fly but uh, you know whatever works it's kind of my motto so we'll go ahead and get started I got some 6 aught uni thread here a light pink I'm just gonna lay down a thread base and work it back towards the bend pretty standard stuff for the tail, I'm using a uh, shell pink marabou. Uh, kind of want to have it about the length of the hook shank. Uh, with cutthroat, I find that they tend to be head hunters. They tend to eat their prey head first, whereas coho will often eat it right from behind. And uh, when the coat with the coho, this can often lead to short strikes because they're nipping at tail and they're not actually connecting with the hook um, so if you find that happening you can always just pinch off a little bit of the tail and make it shorter um, so in that regard it's probably better to have it be too long than too short because you can always shorten it up but you can't lengthen it while you're on the water so I'm just gonna wrap that all the way forward just to help keep the the body kind of uniform 
um, you tie it all in at the back and just leave it there you end up with that sort of clump of big clump of a tie-in point which I'm not a big fan of next I'm just gonna put a single strand of crystal flash this is a UV pearl I'm gonna have it kinda extend a little bit beyond the body that's just a habit of mine uh, my buddy Chris who's a well used to be a fly fishing guide out of Nia Bay taught me how to taught me to tie all my clousers that way with the flash tail sticking beyond the the body and uh, I've just become a big believer in it. Uh, you can tie it in on the side, kind of like I did here, although I put mine a little bit more towards the top just because I'm going to have the two uh, uh, golden pheasant tippets here. So next up comes the golden pheasant and this is easily the hardest part of this fly and it's not terribly difficult. Um, you're going to tie one in on each side of the hook, near and far, uh, to give it that sort of shrimpy barred look to it. Um, it can be a little bit difficult to work with. The, you know, the, you kind of kind of stroke the fibers a little bit to get them to lay together and they have a tendency to want to flay out kind of sometimes if you tie it. and That's not the end of the world. I used to really get fussy about how it looked but I found that when it gets wet they tend to all just kind of come back together anyway so um, I'm tying it in just a sh shade shorter than the marabou um, you know it's about maybe a quarter inch shorter and I'm going to tie one in on each side so I've got the near one in here Put more wraps on that and we're going to do the same on the far side Again, this doesn't have to be perfect. It just, you know, comes down to what kind of fly tire you are. Uh, I know a lot of guys that really strive for perfection, and that is just absolutely fine. I'm just not wired that way. I want to make it simple, and I want to catch fish. So I'm going to turn my vise just a hair here to help me see what I'm doing. This is where a rotary vise really comes in handy. I, I don't do a lot of true rotary tying, but just having the ability to rotate the vise at different angles and then I can tighten that tension screw and I can hold it there and I find that that is a big help okay that's down there we go so got that kind of tied in at the, the other side it doesn't look too terrible it's inflated out a little bit, but like I said, when it gets wet, I don't think it really matters, and it's going to, uh, as long as it's got that barred look to it at the back, I really feel that that's the key to this fly. Uh, there's something about that that the fish just can't resist, and especially during the winter, shrimp is such an important food source for these fish that they see something like this, and they're just going to eat it. So next I'm going with a, uh, it's like a shell pink, uh, just a real basic chenille. Like I said, I, I believe Mark uses a, a dubbed body. Um, I'm just not that great at working with dubbing. I can never quite get it to look the way I want it. Um, it's certainly fishy, especially since you can pick it out and make it look all kind of buggy. And uh, I just find that this doesn't, a dubbed body doesn't produce any better for me and the chenille is easier to work with so that's what I use but you can use you know I've used everything from Estaz to uh, oh cactus chenille and that frizzle chenille and you know I've used it all um, I've just kind of settled on this really wrap that up towards the front I'm gonna leave just a little bit of room here to put my saddle hackle I thought I had a hackle picked out, but apparently I don't. So I'm trying to find a pretty small hackle just because since I'm using a size 8 hook, I don't want to get too crazy. Uh, maybe this guy. Yeah, he'll work. 
I, I've tied these with uh, just a little bit of a clump of marabou at the front. Um, like I said, Mark uses a it's like a red feather. I cannot think of the name of it. It's just killing me. I'm gonna have to go look that up. Um, I don't have that particular feather, and it really probably doesn't make a lick of difference since they're looking at the back end of this fly anyway and seeing all that shrimpiness. So just gonna tie in a just this is just a basic Chinese saddle hackle. Um, tying it in by the tip. Uh, the only reason I'm doing that really is because I want the shorter fibers since this is a size 8 hook. Makes it just a tad easier. As I said on my, my Delia Squid video, I'm not the greatest at working with hackle. I'm really not. But I make do. So we're going to put I don't know, two, three, four wraps of hackle on there. If I can get this to lay over. I kind of stroke the fibers back as I wrap. Probably could have left a little bit more room behind the bead here, but that is okay. There we go. That'll look okay. And this hackle is actually a little longer than I wanted, but that was brilliant. Clearly, I'm as good of a video maker as I am. Now you can see it's kind of wanky. I'm just going to stroke those back and kind of tie them down. Again, it's just a little bit longer. I'm kind of getting low on the better short, smaller hackles, but don't care don't care all right got that secured give it a quick little whip finish and a little drop of uh, Sally Hansen's or your preferred head cement I like to put a little extra glue on this just to help keep the, the hackle kind of secured. And there you go. This is a squimp. Uh, I fish this uh, intermediate line, floating line. I fish it on a hover line a lot. Uh, I tie it with or without the bead. Uh, mostly with the bead, but there's a few beaches where they're just really, really shallow, and I find that the bead is just, I just end up in the rocks too much. So a uh, an unweighted version on a floating line fish just under the surface is the ticket. Um, you can experiment with this. Like I said, I've tied it with marabou at the front. Uh, Mark does it a little differently. If you want to go over and look at his step-by-step -step at Washington Fly Fishing, I highly recommend it. Um, check out some of his other flies that he's posted up to because he's incredible. He's a million times the fly tire that I am, and but that's okay. Um, this fly will just flat out catch fish, so uh, give it a shot. See how it works for you. Thanks for watching.